Well, according to the Bhagavad Gita, as it explains in the 11th chapter, everything is connected. So yes, everything in the cosmos is interlinked. Everything has a connection with each other. I am reminded of Steve Jobs, who talked about connecting things. In a different context, that is. He said about creativity, creativity is just connecting different things. Steve had that creativity, the vision through which he could connect things, connecting the dots, as he called it, by which he came up with uh, revolutionary products. For example, he connected the concept of an iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. And he connected this to the concept of multi-touch and came up with the iPhone. Steve explained that Creative people are able to join the dots because they are able to clearly see. Because they have had vast experience in their particular field, firstly, they are able to clearly see the dots. And secondly, they are able to clearly see various possibilities of connecting those dots. At the level of the intellect, he was so hardwired to connecting different things. And he did that beautifully even with the different experiences he had in life. For example, his Stanford commencement speech. Today, I want to tell you three stories from my life. The first story is about connecting the dots. I dropped out of Reed College after the first six months, but then stayed around as a drop-in for another 18 months or so before I really quit. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life, and no idea how college was going to help me figure it out. And here I was, spending all of the money my parents had saved their entire life. So I decided to drop out and trust that it would all work out okay. I didn't have a dorm room, so I slept on the floor in friends' rooms. I returned Coke bottles for the five-cent deposits to buy food with. And I would walk the seven miles across town every Sunday night to get one good meal a week at the Hare Krishna temple. You bet that was a tough decision. But nonetheless, he followed his intuition. And 10 years later, he connected it beautifully to the development of the Macintosh computer. It was pretty scary at the time, but looking back, it was one of the best decisions I ever made. The minute I dropped out, I could stop taking the required classes that didn't interest me and begin dropping in on the ones that looked far more interesting. And much of what I stumbled into by following my curiosity and intuition turned out to be priceless later on. Let me give you one example. Reed College at that time offered perhaps the best calligraphy instruction in the country. I decided to take a calligraphy class to learn how to do this. None of this had even a hope of any practical application in my life. But 10 years later, when we were designing the first Macintosh computer, it all came back to me and we designed it all into the Mac. It was the first computer with beautiful typography. If I had never dropped out, I would have never dropped in on that calligraphy class, and personal computers might not have the wonderful typography that they do. We all face this, right? Intuitively, we know that this is the right thing to do, but the consequences seem so scary that it's a tough decision to take. Because intellectually, we can't see into the future. Of course, it was impossible to connect the dots looking forward when I was in college, but it was very, very clear looking backwards 10 years later. Again, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever, because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path and that will make all the difference. It's not that doing meditation or spiritual practices allows you to look into the future. But you do gain clarity of how things work in the cosmos.
यथंतो योगी नश्चैनम पश्यन्ति आत्मन्यवस्थितम यथंतो व्यक्तामानो नैनम पश्यन्ति चेतसा through meditation and other spiritual practices your consciousness is raised to sattva guna in sattva guna you see the truth and the truth is everything is connected we see there is connection between the controller between nature between the living entities and uh, the more one is able to see the connection one can see the past one can connect the past one can even see its connection with the future trained eyes just like when i see an x-ray i don't understand from the shade to the you know the light and the shade but a trained eye can clear i don't even understand which part of the body the x-ray the trained eye can actually see and make out exactly what it is in its pure state intelligence can actually see things clearly but it is the lower modes which actually cover the chanting of the mantras help to cleanse the uh, covering remove the covering for someone in sattva guna intuition is not a vague phenomenon because they have better clarity on how things might connect in the future therefore naturally they are more confident in decision making intuition is when we actually connect to an aspect of our own self that is a deeper reality than the ever changing flickering thoughts of our mind and our perceptions of our senses the bhagavad gita it's based on this principle of making decisions that are based on a higher platform of reality 